Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm Father Stephen Imbrato of Life Ministries US.org, Life Ministries US.org. Today, we are celebrating the Mass of Our Lady of the Rose, but in a very special way because we want to uh, ask also St. Joseph, her spouse, of course, uh, to intercede on our behalf Wednesday of each month in conjunction with Our Lady of America. Our Lady of America dot com. Uh, we ask Saint Joseph. We do a votive mass uh, for Saint Joseph for his intercession. Uh, he uh, requested uh, this uh, particular uh, devotion, uh, uh, and Our Lady of America dot com. We uh, are starting this devotion to Saint Joseph. Now this mass is. Not only for your intentions and my intentions, but also we are bringing up this Mass for the benefactors, the supporters, of the devotees of Our Lady of America. Uh, so OurLadyOfAmerica.com, I am an ambassador for OurLadyOfAmerica.com, Our Lady of America Devotion. These are the good folks who have uh, uh, known Sister Mildred the Seer for decades up to the time of her. Indeed, uh, this is the original website, Our Lady of America.com. So, on this, the, the of Our Lady of the Rosary, we also ask for the intercession of our spouse, St. Joseph, a father of the church and also patron saint of fathers and families. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Cry, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may through the procession of the Blessed Virgin Mary, passion, and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen a reading from the letter of saint paul to the galatians brethren after 14 years again i went up to jerusalem with barnabas taking titus along also I went up in accord with the revelation and presented to them the gospel that I preached to the Gentiles, but privately to those of repute, so that I might not be running or have run in vain. On the contrary, when they saw that I had been entrusted with the gospel to the uncircumcised, just as Peter to the circumcised, for the one who worked in Peter for an apostolate to the circumcised, worked also in me for the Gentiles. And when they recognized the great on me, James and Cephas, and who were reputed to be gave me and Barnabas their right hands in partnership, that we should go to the Gentiles and that they be circumcised. Only we would be mindful of the poor, which is the very thing I was eager to do. And when Cephas came to Antioch, I opposed him to his face because he clearly was wrong. For until some people came from James, he used to eat with Gentiles. But when they came, he began to draw back and separate himself because he was afraid of the circumcised. And the rest of the Jews acted hypocritically along with him. And the result that even Barnabas was carried away by their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not on the right road in line with the truth of the gospel, I said to Cephas in front of all, If you, though, are living like a Gentile, 
How can you compel the Gentiles to live like Jews? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to the world and tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness towards us, and fidelity to the Lord endures forever. Go out to the world. Alleluia. You have received the spirit of adoption as sons. We cry, Abba, Father. Alleluia. 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 The Lord is with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, I'll be thy name. Your kingdom come. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive everyone in debt to us, and do not subject us to the final test. The Gospel of the Lord. So let's just iterate at the beginning of Mass, especially those who are joining us now uh, for uh, this Mass of the Feast of Our Lady of the Rosary. All right, the Feast of the Rosary. Now, on the first Wednesday of each month, we at Our Lady of America dot com have decided in uh, uh, at St. Joseph's request to have a day set aside for him and this devotion, first Wednesday devotion we'll call it, right? The first Wednesday devotion to uh, the, the uh, uh, so this is that mass, all right? However, on a normal ferial day or an optional memorial, I'd be able to do a votive mass to St. Joseph, but since it's the feast of Our Lady of the Rosary, then we cannot do the votive mass of St. Joseph. But how beautiful it is at the spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Joseph, we can honor the two of them uh, today. And so this is the mass of Our Lady of the Rosary, but it's also dedicated to the devotees of Our Lady of America, in particular, uh, asking St. Joseph, the spouse of Mary, for his intercession. And again, uh, please remember this first Wednesday devotion where we'll be celebrating Mass consecrated to uh, St. Joseph, asking for intercession. Now, as I mentioned yesterday, you know, we, we see throughout the letters of St. Paul some contentiousness between Paul and Peter. We see, some, I think, I interpret it as some pridefulness and haughtiness on St. Paul, uh, whether he felt that he was not given the recognition that he deserved or whatever. That by no means, by no means, the things being evident in the writings of St. Paul diminish the divine revelation, the divine inspiration that these writings are. I mean, we need to remember that Paul was a human being, a sinner. Peter was a human being, a sinner, right? Uh, this uh, passage that we see today from Galatians is the only time in Scripture that Peter is not given primacy. And I, I think Paul probably did it on purpose, maybe a little bit upset at Peter. Uh, but the whole tone of today's readings is one of contentious and, and kind of like puffing Paul up uh, at the sake of um, And that's okay, you know. I mean, that's okay. I don't uh, have any issues with that at all. I mean, there's no greater sinner than I am, and so who am I to... In any way, shape, or form, have issues with uh, St. Peter and St. Paul. I am just pointing out what to me seems quite obvious. Why? As an encouragement for all of us, 
And why do I say that? Well, I'll tell you why, all right? If Paul can be critical of Peter, and Peter, in one of his letters, all right, points out that Paul can be very hard to understand, all right, that we should have no problems, no hesitation in, in truth and in charity to criticize our bishops and even the Pope. As long as we are telling the truth, and we stick to what is clearly the truth. So when I say I believe the Pope is confusing, is confusing, I am not saying he's not the Pope. I am not saying that he is the Antichrist. I mean, this type of stuff, when I see this on social media, he's not the Pope, he's not legitimate, he's the Antichrist. That's nonsense. That's sinful stuff. All right, that is sinful stuff. But to say that the Pope is confusing when there's mass amounts of confusion in the church, and I pointed out um, in a couple of my homilies exactly how that is true, all right, that number one, we see the confusion over Leticia. We see the confusion over the election here in the United States when somebody like Biden can say that he's a friend of the Pope and the Pope is friends with him when uh, uh, he denies uh, the, his Catholic faith in so many different ways. Uh, we see the confusion uh, going on now uh, in regards to the LBGT community. Um, and indeed, uh, I was just reading some stuff yesterday uh, about that, where this Brian Massingale, this priest Brian Massingale, uh, it says, I mean, says in a, in a YouTube video, right, that I am a gay priest. He doesn't say I'm a gay celibate priest. He says I am a outwardly gay priest, which to me means, right, that he's actively indulging in sexual activity. This is a mortal sin. He's admitting that he's committing more. He's got no problems with that. Uh, we see Father James Martin uh, saying that uh, that uh, uh, homosexual lesbianism, even trans, is not disordered. In other words, what he's saying is it's not sinful. Look at if somebody is sincerely, sincerely dedicated to celibacy, chastity, and then a lot of other people say, well, celibacy is not chastity, and I looked that up, okay. And celibacy is abstaining from sexual intimacy, okay? So, um, for a no distinction between celibacy and chastity, okay? We can't, be, we can't say we're celibate and not be chaste, all right? We can't say we're chaste and not be celibate, all right? It's one and the same. No sexual activity. It doesn't mean whether it's a, it doesn't matter whether it's with a woman, another man, it, it doesn't matter. Okay? I mean, the desire to be celibate means to be without relationship of any kind, and that relationship uh, with that, 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 that bridal relationship with the church, uh, being a servant of is a one to be chaste, uh, meaning that no sexual intimacy, none whatsoever. All right, so, and and again, there's a difference between people falling through human weakness and then uh, other people just intellectually saying, hey, it's okay to be gay, right? It's okay to, uh, celibacy uh, is not violated uh, through homosexuality. This is nonsense. This is, and is what persistent mortal sin does, right? It makes you stupid, right? It makes you silly. Um, it, it's just ridiculous. And we see it over and over again. So we have mass amounts of confusion in the church. Mass amounts of confusion in the church. We see it in the election. We see it in the Vatican. We see it with the Pope entertaining uh, and giving honors to abortion doctors while claiming that, uh, you know, abortion is intrinsically evil. Uh, the, the confusion goes on and on and on and on. So to say that there's confusion in the church and that the Pope adds to this confusion is a statement of fact. If you want to take issue with my statement of fact, then take issue with my statement of fact. I am not making any personal statement about what the Pope uh, or whether uh, the Pope uh, uh, is, is, I mean, surely not the Antichrist, all right? He's just a human being, all right? He's a human being who uh, uh, 
And again, he at least he's smart enough. This uh, 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 this newest encyclical, he, he says it's not infallible. Uh, and thank God, because there's more confusing stuff in that, too. I don't think he's issued an encyclical that hasn't been confusing. Now, that's a problem in and of itself, because encyclicals are so infallible. So he's watering down the concept of encyclical, uh, 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 the way he's presenting them and uh, how he's even written. I mean, they're not even authoritatively written. It's uh, uh, just... I can go on and so what's the point of all this? What's the point of this, right? Well, the Blessed Mother is the mother of the church, and St. Joseph is the father of the church, right? Uh, St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary, uh, the father of Jesus, the stepfather, the, the mother of Jesus, uh, and likewise, you can't separate Christ from his church, so they are the um, intercessory parents of the church. Ask the Blessed Mother and St. Joseph to intercede on our behalf. On this day of great grace, where the church announces Our Lady of the Rosary, this great weapon against this great weapon uh, against to counteract the attacks against the church. Uh, and this week where we uh, approach uh, the uh, October 11th, uh, uh, 12th, the 13th, period of grace, uh, uh, Fatima, and then, of course, uh, we have the Rosary Coast to Coast on Sunday, which is really a worldwide rosary. As a worldwide rosary on Saturday, as we approach this election in the United States that the whole world is watching, that indeed we need to ask the Blessed Mother and St. Joseph for clarity, for clarity, for simplicity in the truth. To see the truth clearly. And you can always recognize the truth. It's always clear and forthright. When you are listening to somebody and you're saying to yourself, you know what? They're not clear. They're vague. I call it dancing. They seem to be spinning a yarn. Uh, you know, all right? You know. All right? Take it to the bank. All right, because the Catholic faith is clear, it's forthright. Those who preach and proclaim the Catholic faith are clear and forthright. Uh, for instance, right, for instance, right, if I was to ask somebody whether, whether mortal sin is real, if Joe Biden is in persistent mortal sin, is there such a thing as persistent mortal sin? Will one unrepented mortal sin cost you your salvation? Uh, believe me, they'll start going around and around and around where, all right, the simple answer is yes, one unrepentant mortal sin will cost you your salvation, all right, that has been the teaching of the church forever, all right, one mortal sin should keep you from receiving communion, or you heap sin upon sin instead of grace upon grace. Um, persistent mortal sin is Joe Biden and other Catholics who denounce their faith in persistent mortal sin. Yes, they are. Uh, can we vote for somebody like that? Well, our vote says that we support uh, their situation, their position. So if you think that in good conscience, you can, uh, according to proper conscience, support somebody who is uh, in mortal sin, that's a scandal. That's a scandal, right? Uh, it'd be like somebody who uh, has rejected their Catholic faith uh, and is now maybe in a relationship with a with a woman, all right, another woman uh, that's not uh, their their wife, all right, and uh, y you know, and you said, oh well, listen, I I'm a we we can still be we can still be friends, and I just we won't discuss this, and uh, you know, it's all right. I mean, it's tantamount to say, look, at, I don't care if you choose to go to hell. Right? I'm not going to say anything. You choose to go to hell. That, 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 I'm not going to say because I don't. I don't really care about you. I mean, we can be friends, but I don't really love you. I don't really care about you because you're choosing to go to hell, and uh, and I'm okay with that. I, I'm okay with that, right? Uh, I mean, this is insanity. It'd be insanity whether the person's on drugs, whether the person's uh, uh, got an alcohol problem. The last words I spoke to my son before he committed suicide, and it was about two or three weeks before he committed suicide, was, 
uh, asking him to repent, asking him to change his life, uh, asking him. I told him that that his drinking is going to uh, 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 end up, all right, uh, 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 hurting a lot of people, hurting him, and hurting a lot of people. Uh, and uh, I'm not sorry that I said that to him. Some people would say, well, you pushed him over the edge. Uh, no, I, I know I didn't. He knows I loved him, and he told me that in his last message to me. But I'm not going to stand there and watch somebody ruin their lives for eternity, for eternity, all right, and not tell them. So we need to, uh, you know, really understand on this great feast, the Lady of the Rosary and St. Joseph, listen to these um, uh, readings today. We need to be able to stand up for the truth and proclaim the truth regardless of who gets upset by it and regardless of who it is that we're proclaiming it to. All right, amen? Amen. All right, now let us ask our Father in heaven to shed his mercy on all of our needs for the Catholic Church, the Pope, bishops, priests, deacons, religious, for our seminary studying for the priesthood, for those discerning religious life, for mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, that everyone in the congregation may desire to do all things in humble obedience for the praise, honor, and glory of God, in atonement and reparation for our sins, and charity and chastity in our vocations. We pray to the Lord. The peace in the world, Eucharistic union, Christians, for the conversion of the world, the conversion of our nations, our political leadership, our own daily personal conversion the attacks against the sanctity of life, marriage, and family, for the least of Christ's brethren, the unborn, the poor, the sick, the thirsty, the naked, the homeless, the hungry, the immune, for all those suffering any trial or tribulation, whether it be physical or spiritual, they may find comfort in Jesus as we reach out to them in spiritual and corporal works of mercy, we pray to the Lord. And for the particular intentions of this Mass, which are the intentions we hold in our hearts, for all of your intentions, for the devotees of our Lady of America on this first Wednesday, on the great feast of Our Lady of the Road, souls in purgatory, especially those that have no one to pray for them, in particular deceased loved ones and for our loved ones and family members away from the church, that they may embrace Christ's mercy, his sacraments of mercy, we pray to the Lord. And we ask for this, we ask for all good things through the intercession of St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. Come for us the bread of life. Bless you, Lord God, creation for your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted, God, the Almighty Father. The Lord to have sacrificed in your hands the praise and glory of his name for our good and our whole world. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may be rightfully conformed to these offerings we bring and so honor the mysteries of your only begotten Son as we may be Jesus who lives and reigns forever and ever. Lord, be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God truly right and just our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds and exaltation of all the saints and especially to celebrate the memory of the blessed Virgin. claim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise for truly even to the earth's ends you have done great things and extended abundant mercy from age to age when you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid you gave us through her the author of our salvation your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him, the host of angels adores your man and rejoices in your presence. Our voices, we pray, join with them in one chorus. Praises we acclaim, <laughs> holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. 
Be holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you grace for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, be holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may be in the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial the salvation of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, <coughs> As we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognize in the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so may obtain an inheritance with your intellect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. Joseph, your blessed apostles and glory um, with all the saints and whose constant intercession in your presence we rely on failing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, our bishops, our bishops all the clergy, and entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to, to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those trespasses, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray for every evil, grace you grant peace in our days, that by the mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all the rest, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my people, give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Enter peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever. The Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant, Grant us peace. us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call him Jesus. Body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. We pray, O Lord our God, that just as we proclaim in the sacrament the death and resurrection of your Son, so that made partakers in his suffering may also merit a share in his consolation and his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With you Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, the in the heavenly host, by the power of God.